This is part two of my end of the year mailbag. There is still time to profit from good prices on AliExpress because they should get the sale going by November 17th. So let's see if you find something interesting for you in part one or part two of this video. As last time, I included a chapter for each product. And of course, you will find the links to all products in the video description. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Staying with the topic of power, we have this watt meter for 150 ampere and 50 volts. Here is a source input with quite thick cables and here is the load. So let's check what it can do. I connected it to my power supply and you see 6.2 volts. This is when it starts to work. And I connected it to the load. Also 6.2 volts and now we can start the test. My power supply can Deliver 6 Ampere maximum. I have 1 Ampere on my load. It shows 1.02 Ampere, which is OK. 2 Ampere, 202. 3 Ampere, 304. 4 Ampere, 404. So quite precise. Now this 150 Ampere is also a little bit cheating. It is maximum 150 Ampere, it's 80 Ampere uh, continuous current, which is anyway too much for what I need. You see also you have a neat display here and it also counts capacity and shows also a graph here. And 6 Ampere and it switched off. Now we had under voltage, so I go to 45 volts. Now we are at 45 volt. And interestingly, it shows that it consumes 0.45 Ampere, which is definitely not right. Because I do not draw anything, the load is off. Now let's check with 1 Ampere. This 0.4 error stays. 2 Ampere, same thing, 3 Ampere, 4 Ampere, the error stays here. 5 Ampere, so we have already 250 watts here, but still it is too much. 400 milliampere, too much. Now I go back with my voltage to check when this starts to appear. The, the, the amperage also goes down. At 12 volt, it's still 0 0.05 ampere. And at 7 volt, it is 0 ampere. Now, this is rather disappointing. It's not that this 0 0.2 ampere is the consumption of the device itself and it, that it measures the input current. No. It only consumes 30 milliampere, not 250 milliampere or 7 watts. This is disappointing because all the device is very nicely made. The display is nice and everything. And it seems also to be quite accurate with this problem here. I do not know if this is only mine. Maybe you comment if you own also one. Here is the listing of this toolkit RC watt meter the wm150 it is 2952 and free shipping now you decide if this is worth the money if you play around with dc voltages and dc projects you will need one or the other dc to dc converter now i have several of them here a big one a medium one, a small one, and a micro one. And if we turn them, we see that they are all 
from the same brand, RC None. I did some tests and found out that at least the buck converters from 24 to 13.8 do not create a lot of RFI, so high frequency noise. And this is important for my project. This is why I go with this RC Nun uh, company. You see here, we have a typical buck converter, 24 volts to 13.8 volts at 40 ampere. This is buck because it goes down. This one is different. Its input voltage is 9 to 40 volts and it outputs 24 volts at 6 ampere. So this is a so-called buck boost converter. From 9 to 23 volt it boosts the voltage up and from 25 to 40 volts it bucks it down to 24 volt. And these are very handy because you do not have to care about the input voltage, you just connect them to basically any source and you always get 24 volts. Now I did not check this buck boost converters on uh, radio frequency interference, but uh, I assume that if they get it right here, they should also get it right here, but we will see. The next one is a same 9 to 40 volt input, 24 volt output, but only 3 ampere. This is 6 ampere and this one is 8 to 36 volt and the output voltage is 12 volt at 1 ampere. I probably would not use it for 6 ampere or for 40 ampere. Uh, the, I always have some, uh, I call it Chinese factor, so I buy a little bit a bigger part and then I do not go to the absolute maximum. Here is the listing of these RC Nun DC to DC converters. The, this one is for 24 volts and it is for the buck and boost converter. You find many others if you enter RC Nun. And here is the price for, for the different sizes. From $11 to $40. As shown before, you get them in different sizes. Now, how do I connect these beefy cables or these beefy wires? In general, I either use Anderson power poles or I use XT60. Now, if you have small installations, you get also XT30, which are really huh, quite small. I do not use them often because for my hands they are a little bit too small and most projects can use XT660s. Now you also get XT90 connectors. They are even bigger than this one, but because I do not use such high currents in my lab here, I generally go with XT60s. Now I recently discovered this nice connector here. It consists of two parts, a normal connector, but this time box mountable. And it is also compatible with the standard XT60 connectors. What you also get if you want is a nice plastic, which is mounted like that. And then you can close it and it is well protected against all weather conditions. Very, very nice. Looking at these Anderson power poles, these are different. They all are exactly the same connectors and they fit like that. So you have no female and male, you just have one pair of connectors and this is also very handy, very, very handy. But they are more expensive than the XT devices. And I use these for 13.8 volt that I know this is a standard. And I use the XTs for all others because the 13.8 volt devices cost a lot of money. And I do not want to mix it up with, for example, a 20 volt power supply and uh, kill them because of my incompetence. 
This is why this is strictly for 13.8 volt in my lab here. Here is the listing of the XT60 connectors. You get them in various variants. And you see the ones I have. The ones I have, 10 pieces cost $10.80 plus $3.37 shipping. Here is a bit of low-tech power stuff. These are two sorts of USB connectors. Both are mountable in cases. This one is a clip-on and this one is screw-on. This one is easier to mount if you do not have a 3D printer because you can just drill a hole, a round hole, very simple. This one is for guys with 3D printers. They can print an opening like that and click it to the opening. So both are only for deliver power. It's nothing with data. But I thought this is very handy because normal connectors are hard to solder and this job is already done. Also here you get a nice cover, by the way. Here is the listing of this USB-C power connectors. These are the square ones. Two pieces are $1, 10 pieces are $3 plus $2 shipping. The round with this cover You get them also in 1, 5 and 10 pieces. 1 is 0, 87 and 10 pieces is $4.71 and shipping also is around $2. You get them also in two colors, by the way. The next one is something completely different. It has to do with communication. And interestingly, this device is called Walter. A nice name, I think. Now, if we open it, we already see LTE antenna. Now, what is the story behind that? Years ago, I used 3G modules to connect some sensors to the cellular network. And then the telcos started to communicate that they will no more support 3G and will switch off the networks. This is when I decided that I will wait for cheap 4G modules and only then start again with using cellular technology for my projects. This, as I said, was many years ago and up till now I was never able to get a connection via a 4G LTE network here in Switzerland. This is why I said, yes, please send me a Walter because the maker of this device promised that it will work in Switzerland. Now you see it is not unpackaged for the moment. I did not try it, but I trust this person who sent it to me and they also included a SIM card which should be capable to connect also to carriers here in Switzerland. I really hope that I will be able to use this device now to connect my first time to a LTE network. Now let's unpackage Walter. It has a well-known ESP32 Wii room chip on it, plus it has a sequence LTE module on it. And here is the slot for the microSIM card. So we will see how this works. And maybe I will even be capable to go to a lab where we can have a look at how LTE works on these modules here. All in all, a very compact and nice device. And what is also important is this small sign here. It is open hardware. Walter is currently on crowd supply. You find a lot of information here. Here are some use cases, the specifications, and here is 
the team. They are located in Belgium. And the last one is high tech again. Now you might know Ublox. Ublox is a Swiss company and they are famous for their GPS modules. Now this one is not the GPS. This one here is the GPS, but it has many other things on this board and it has antennas. This one is for GPS and the other ones are for 4G again, 4G. And here is also the SIM card. Now, what is it? It is a precision GPS system. It should be able to navigate to the centimeter. A normal GPS module can navigate to about two meters or so. And this one here should go down to the centimeter. I will dedicate the whole video on this technology because I think this is fascinating. GPS in general is fascinating and this technology is even more. So stay tuned when I will show how this all works. I got this module from Michael who works for Ublox and who did this project as a side project in his private time. And then Ublox said, this is a nice board and they sell it now as a development board for their precision GPS chips. This was part two of the mailbag. I hope you were able to shoot some deals on AliExpress. If this video was useful or at least interesting for you, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.